I don't know what it means that we have the same background to our slides, other than I haven't switched over to the new memorial background yet. But I, I just want to uh, start by saying that we're probably going to have a little bit different uh, definition of locally advanced disease. So first of all, what are the objectives of local regional therapy? So these are for patients who have predominantly liver disease, and the idea is here to prolong their survival and minimize bad side effects. So in general, this is used for people who are not in the curative category or patients who would otherwise be resected but have comorbidities that preclude that. Uh, this is the BCLC staging system. Uh, here are the curative therapies. In, in general, ablation is usually used for curative, uh, in a curative setting, patients with single tumors or sometimes two or three smaller tumors. We would argue, the interventional radiologist, that we uh, would probably do well in that setting, even in patients who are now considered uh, surgically resectable, excluding patients who are eligible for transplant. But today we're talking about palliative therapies, and whereas embolization is considered the treatment of choice by guidelines for patients who have intermediate stage disease, there is some evidence to suggest that in patients with liver dominant disease, but some extra hepatic disease, that this may also be a reasonable treatment. I would think that today we're arguing about these patients, and I don't know exactly who these patients are. But I have decided to define them as patients with larger lesions, bigger than five centimeters, more than three lesions, multinodular, and patients with branch portal vein tumor thrombus. I think if you have uh, main portal vein tumor thrombus, that's clearly, I think that falls into the more advanced category. And maybe also patients with infiltrative tumors because they seem to be a different group of, of patients. So, I mean, my answer to the question is seriously. I mean, so my, my argument is sort of uh, echoes some of the things I think that Dr. Chody said. A lot of these patients self-select themselves by showing up with uh, radiologic markers for bad biology of disease. So as I've chosen to define local or locally advanced therapy, those are all bad prognostic uh, factors. I'm going to try and go through very quickly what the treatment options are because there are some updates to what we've talked about in years past, and I want to make sure you guys all understand the differences and whether or not one or the other is better. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about bland embolization, conventional taste, drug-eluting beads, and Y90. The evidence for these therapies, as I'm sure you all know, date back to 2002, the studies by Levette and the study by Lowe, the first level one evidence that showed a survival, of it, uh, survival advantage for conventional taste, which is where you take uh, chemotherapy of some sort. The idea is to devitalize the tumor by delivering chemotherapy to it locally and in high concentrations. So you take some sort of chemotherapy, which is not well defined. Some people use one, some people use two, different kinds, different brands. You mix it up with some lipiodol. You deliver it through a catheter. So the idea is that this emulsion now is delivered to the tumor, the chemotherapy stays there, and then there's a light embolization of the feeding arteries to hopefully keep it there, and it's not performed to stasis, and the chemotherapy kills the tumor. The studies that documented the fact that you have high concentration of chemotherapy in the tumor for prolonged periods of time are those that I've listed. I don't have time to go through them all. I'll just say that most of them are animal studies or they're done with uh, chemotherapeutic agents that were experimental. So for instance, that are fat soluble or lipophilic and that's not how chemoembolization is traditionally practiced. A new vehicle, drug-eluting beads, was uh, introduced about almost 10 years ago now and the idea here is that the uh, chemotherapy is actually on the microspheres. It's delivered to the tumor where it's slowly eluded, and therefore you get some combination of ischemia and chemotherapy, and that's what kills the tumor. Uh, there's good pharmacokinetics behind this, unlike conventional taste, so it, we have evidence that shows that the chemotherapy actually is delivered to the tumor in high concentration. Uh, we had an initial trial, uh, it was called the Precision 5 study, and this showed an improvement in response rate and also decrease in toxicity. This was early data. There was a later study that showed, again, improvement in response rate, but no difference in TTP or survival. 
This is an example of a patient treated with uh, deb, uh, drug eluting beads at our hospital, large tumor with big portal vein involvement. This is what the angiogram looked like at the time of treatment. The CT scan is from directly after treatment. You can see where the drug eluting beads go because there's contrast retention uh, caused by the contrast being trapped with the beads. This is how the patient's tumor looked on the pre-scan, and this is how he looked following eight months after his embolization, no more enhancing tumor. One year, so I would call this guy an advanced uh, patient rather than even locally advanced. One year later, he had a small recurrence inside the area of treatment right there, and that was treated with a combination of embolization and also ablation. It could have been treated with ablation, but would have been very hard to target, so I embolized it first so you could see it. And this guy is doing well four years later, but this is a declaration of biology of disease, in my opinion. Um, that's how his initial scan looked. You have bland embolization, and this is where the tumor is devitalized by ischemia alone, so that we use small particles. We block up all the parent vessels. It's performed to stasis, the idea being that ischemia kills the tumor. Uh, this is an example of a patient who might fall into the locally advanced category, big tumor in the right liver. This is how his angiogram looks, sorry, before and then following embolization. This is how uh, the angiogram looks directly after the embolization, and again, the contrast outlines the tumor because of trapping of contrast there. This is what he looks like about a month later with a devitalized tumor. This patient is still alive. I just saw him a couple weeks ago. He's had a bunch of more treatments for this in between now and then. But again, this says something to me about biology of disease. Uh, you could have argued that that patient would be also well treated with surgery and wouldn't have had the additional therapies, although most of his recurrent disease has not been local. It's been intrahepatic but distant hepatic. Uh, he was 88 years old at the time that I met him, 86 years old, sorry, so he's an old guy. And this is another thing I would argue that a lot of the studies that are reported, especially when you start looking at surgery and transplant, that's another self-selected group because in order to make it to surgery, you have to meet a lot of criteria that I would argue that many of the patients who are treated with local regional therapy don't make. Uh, this is our, our data on bland embolization. This was a, a retrospective group of patients we reported on in 2008. One, two, and three year survivals of 66, 46, and 33 percent. But if you take out the patients with portal vein involvement or extra hepatic disease, so you make them comparable to the Levette and Lowe groups, then all of a sudden the survival is 84, 66, and 51. So there's the Levette results and there's our results penciled in. They don't really look that much different, although again, it's a, not a randomized trial. There was a randomized trial looking at drug eluting beads uh, versus hepatic embolization. This was again an early trial. They found a significant difference in uh, TTP and also response rate, but no uh, difference in survival at early up to a year. This is a later study, uh, same thing difference in time to progression, but no difference in survival. Uh, oops. Sorry, this is, this is our data, looking at drug eluting beads and HAE. This is a study that we just completed uh, a couple of years ago, and we found no difference in any measure of uh, effect. The primary endpoint was response to treatment at two to three weeks. We found no difference in response to treatment at that time or at any time point nor did we find any difference in progression-free survival or overall survival. This is the uh, local response to treatment by resist and M-resist. Here are the survival data. Uh, no, no difference in intent, either the intent to treat or the treated patients, but survival is very similar to what have been reported for all of the other local regional therapies, arterial. Radioembolization, this is the new thing. Everyone wants radioembolization. The patients read about it on the internet and they come and ask for it. Uh, there is no question that it provides less post-embolization syndrome, and the idea here is that you use little spheres that are loaded with Y90. It's not really embolic. The whole idea is that you're giving internal radiation therapies. Sometimes the tumors don't change in size, so you can't really, it can be difficult to evaluate them, but not usually with multi-phase imaging. Uh, some of the best results that I've seen presented. These are about them. There's no prospective studies. This is retrospective results. Again, uh, in the best patients, 
child A, 17 uh, months median survival, child B, less than that. There's another trial looking at TACE versus RAE. No difference in uh, survival between the two groups. So in summary, transarterial therapy, although the only uh, level one evidence compared to best supportive care exists for conventional chemoembolization, they're actually, the results seem very similar for all of the intraarterial therapies, with the exception of Y90, where, I mean, you could argue that there's no difference between 17 months and 21 months, but I must say most of the uh, chemo uh, chemoembolization and, and drug-eluting bead embolization and our own uh, studies, generally you're talking about 20 months or more, so it's kind of interesting to me that the best results I've seen reported have been 17. Again, not doesn't mean anything scientifically, but I find it interesting. So with equivalent results, I think when you guys are all going to your uh, interventional radiologists and looking for some sort of treatment, um, just understand that there really has not been any study that's demonstrated a difference in any of these techniques. You have to take a lot of other things into account, like expense and uh, occlusion of vessels that we see with chemoembolization. Uh, there's data about embolization and ablation. I'm already a little bit running over time, so I'm not going to talk a lot about this other than the fact that in select patients, even with locally advanced disease, this may be appropriate. We actually looked at some data looking at surgical resection and, uh, emboli uh, and ablation, rather, in patients with lesions up to seven centimeters. It was a retrospective cohort-type review, but we did have a lot of follow-up, 134 months, and ultimately, although there were uh, patients in the emboablation group were more likely to recur, the resected patients were more likely to have other issues like complications and prolonged hospital stay and whatnot, and there was no difference in survival between the two groups. So I'm going to basically end there by saying there's no real data, and there's certainly no real data looking at locally advanced surgical resection versus local regional therapy. I think that's why these patients all warrant discussion at our tumor boards because they're just so individual, older patients, younger patients, comorbidities, and the underlying liver disease. The advantages of local regional therapy, of course, are you can combine different methods. They can be done repetitively as needed. There is a lower, uh, shorter hospital stay and probably less morbidity and mortality, and basically it's just another way that we can take care of these patients. So thanks very much.